Most everyone knows the story of the Beatitudes. I wonder how many people love the Beatitudes, how many people understand them. I wonder how many people don't understand them. This chapter in Matthew was titled The Sermon on the Mount. The first two words of each of the eight Beatitudes is blessed are. The Latin is beati sunt. They are happy. Jesus is teaching them how to live their lives as he lives his life. Jesus lived every one of these Beatitudes. Jesus was poor in spirit. He mourned. He was meek. He was righteous. He was merciful. He was pure of heart. He was a peacemaker. He was persecuted. For Christians, these Beatitudes are how we are to live our lives. Blessed are the poor in spirit. This may be the most misunderstood. Jesus is not speaking about poverty. To be poor in spirit means that we realize our utter dependence on God for everything. There are times in our lives when we have no choice but to rely on God. It is a wonderful grace and a life-changing insight of faith to realize that the Lord is with us and that God can sustain us through difficult moments. Every breath, every success, every accomplishment we experience comes from God. Only with the eyes of one who is poor in spirit can that humbling truth be known. Our world promotes strength and independence. The gospel promotes dependence on God. This attitude does not cause one to have low self-esteem, but rather to know that their true dignity and self-worth comes from God. We see Jesus poor in spirit, relying on the will of his Father when he prays in the garden. My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Blessed are those who mourn. We all mourn in our lives. Lots of things make us sad. It's important to know that Jesus is not promoting sadness. Not all sadness is of a holy nature. This mourning in the second beatitude is the mourning of our sins and the sins of the world. Mourning for people's resistance to God's plan for the world. This sadness can lead to repentance. We see Jesus mourning when he drew near to Jerusalem and was troubled because it would not recognize that its Messiah has come. As he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. Blessed are the meek. Maybe a better translation would be blessed are the gentle. Jesus referred to himself when he said, I am gentle and humble of heart. To be meek or gentle is not to be subservient. It is the ability to accomplish what is right without harming others. When someone is gentle, they can still be persistent and unwavering while being respectful and at the same time helpful. Being respectful does not mean we do what they want, but that we do what God wants for them. We see this in Jesus when he was teaching about retaliation. And he said, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. To be righteous means to do the will of God, even while the world acts contrary to God's will. It means that we don't just do enough, but we have to hunger and thirst for greater righteousness. Jesus hungered for righteousness, and therefore much of his ministry was directed to the underprivileged. We see this in Jesus when he was teaching and told the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. To those who were convinced of their own righteousness, the Pharisee prayed in the temple, O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, and then went on to praise himself. Meanwhile, the tax collector just prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus said, I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. Blessed are the merciful. Mercy is just not, it's not just an inner emotional feeling. It is when we express mercy in concrete acts 
to alleviate the suffering of others. When Jesus had mercy on someone, he didn't just feel sorry for them or offer to pray for them. He actually did something to help them. We are expected to show the mercy of God to others through our actions. We see this in Jesus when he forgave those crucifying him. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And again, when Peter asked, how many times must I forgive my brother? As many as seven times? Jesus replied, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. Blessed are the pure of heart. When God told us the two greatest commandments, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. The second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If we follow just these two commandments, we would obey all of the Ten Commandments and satisfy all of the Beatitudes. Today, we separate all of our functions in life. Here is my faith, here is my work, here is my family, here is my free time. What we don't realize is that each of these parts compete with each other. If we are pure of heart, having a singleness of heart, Jesus is the Lord of every part of our lives at all times. Being pure of heart means that in every situation and circumstance, we allow our decisions and actions to be guided by the Lord. We see this in Jesus when he resisted the devil's temptation in the desert. He said, get away, Satan. It is written, the Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peace is not so much as the absence of violence, but it is the presence of justice. Peace is the result of right relationship with God, others, the world, and ourselves. We see this in Jesus at his arrest in Gethsemane, when one of his disciples cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. Jesus said, stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Jesus is not advocating oppression. Rather, our Lord is encouraging us to be joyful when we are put down because of being a Christian. For a person to really live the Beatitudes, they must act according to the values of the gospel. These gospel values are often contrary to the values of the world. A person who lives the Beatitudes will be committed to following Jesus with all their heart soul, mind, and strength. A person will never experience rejection or ridicule if their faith is merely interior beliefs. It is only when a person lives their faith in a visible public way and make a difference in the world that others will notice them and either accept them or reject them. Persecution is a confirmation that our faith is being lived in a visible way. We see this in Jesus when he was brought before the Sanhedrin, and many witnesses came forward to provide false testimony against him. Jesus taught his disciples to expect to be persecuted. He said, if the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. The Beatitudes are just not to be lived. There are rewards that come with them. The kingdom of heaven will be ours. We will be comforted. We will inherit the land. We will be satisfied. We will be shown mercy. We will see God. We will be called children of God. I'd like to end today with a scripture reading that I read Friday morning when I was doing my Friday morning prayer is from 2 Corinthians. It, it confounded me. When I was reading, I read it, and I immediately read it again. It's very short. And then I started reading on, and I went back to it. I read it at least 12 times while I was sitting there. It kind of ties into the Beatitudes, but, but listen. I willingly boast of my weakness, that the power of Christ may rest upon me, Therefore, I am content with weakness, with mistreatment, with distress, with persecutions and difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am powerless, 
It is then that I am strong. 